Alrighty, this is Aussie Gamer 17 Welcome back, we're going to be playing some more Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments. And this time we're going to be playing Case 4, The Abbey Grange Affair. If you've just joined us, I have run through cases 1 to 3 already, and what we're doing is it's a full walkthrough where we're going to get an easy 1000 gamer score. We're going to get all the achievements, and I'm going to walk you through exactly what to do. So I hope you enjoy, and without waiting any longer, let's get on to case four. The game is afoot, not a word. Into your clothes and come. I'll wait for you in the sitting room. I've just received a note from Inspector Lestrade, a letter from the suburbs. He is in need of my presence. Whenever he has asked for my assistance, it has always turned out to be entirely justified. I fancy that every one of his cases has found its way into your collection. Uh, yes, they all seem worthy of... However, I regret your fatal habit of looking at everything from the point of view of a story instead of a scientific exercise. Fatal? Oh, Holmes, you... I beg your pardon, I digress. It would be much better to examine this letter than to try to convince you. All right, so here we are in control for the first time in case four. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we're going for an achievement called the Dog Fancier. And to get that achievement, you have to interact with the dog Toby at least once per case. Um, now, there is a chance later on in the case where we actually get to work a little bit with Toby, but I haven't been able to test whether that actually counts as your interaction as it is part of the story. So I always make sure that we'll talk to Toby here at the start of case four. So let's just have a quick chat to him. I agree with you, Toby, that Watson's shoe is preferable to Mrs. Hudson's cold cuts. All right, and that's all you have to do for that. And as Watson annoyingly keeps reminding us, the letter is here on the table. So let's grab that. Pick it up. Now we want to examine the address. I can tell from Lestrade's handwriting that he was in a hurry when he wrote this letter. I don't know how you can tell that from that. It looks quite neat. If I was in a hurry, it'd be a lot messier than that. And the wax seal. Examine a that. wax seal with the monogram E-B. And then rotate the letter around and have a look at the back. The uh, coat of arms. The Rackenstall family coat of arms. Now we open it up and have a read. So pause the video if you need to read that first page. And the same there with the second. But it's basically Lestrade is asking us to come and see him, um, being very vague about what exactly what's happened. Promising, as always, it appears to be a case of murder. So you believe that Sir Eustace is dead? I should say so. Lestrade wouldn't have sent for me for less. His writing shows considerable agitation, and he is not an emotional man. These people belong to high society. The quality of the writing paper, the E.B. monogram, their coat of arms. The crime was committed before midnight. Holmes, how can you possibly tell? Well, it is all thanks to Lestrade. He wrote his letter at 3.30 in the morning. Imagine the chain of events before that. The local police had to be called in. Scotland Yard was notified. Lestrade himself had to make haste there and finally compose the letter he sent to me. All of that makes for a fair night's work. It makes sense. Lestrade also speaks of the woman he released. That seems to indicate that she had been held somewhere during the crime. Much time has been wasted. Let us find a cab and go to Abbey Grange immediately. I live in hope of an interesting morning. All right, so here we are. We're going to uh, straight away head to the scene of the crime. Let's do that. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, here you are. I'm very glad that you have come, but perhaps I should not have troubled you after all. And why is that? Lady Brackenstall has come to her senses, and she has given so clear an account of the affair that there is not much left for us to do. You remember that Lewisham gang of burglars? What, the three Randalls? Exactly. The father and two sons. 
It's their work. They stole a silver service, which is of great value. Sir Eustace Brackenstall is dead, then? Yes. His head was knocked in with his own poker. A violent act of aggression. Yes, the poor lady. She has had a most dreadful experience. She was assaulted and tied to a chair. But I think that you would best see her and hear her account of the facts. She is in the morning room with her maid, Teresa Wright. Where is the body of the deceased? In the dining room. We haven't touched anything. All right. I'm going to examine it. Very good, Watson. All right. Sorry about that. The uh, game kicked me out for a second there in the middle of that little scene. So um, that that'd be the reason for a little glitch you might have seen, depending on my editing skills. But all right. Now that we have control, the first task for us is to go and talk to the victim's wife. And she's just in this room here. So head straight ahead and here we go. Ladies, allow me to introduce myself. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I'm assisting Inspector Lestrade in this investigation. Mr. Holmes, I am the wife of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. We were married only a year ago. I am sorry for your loss. Please accept my deepest condolences. I suppose that it is no use my attempting to conceal that our marriage has not been a happy one. I fear that all would tell you that, even if I were to attempt to deny it. All right, we're just going to go through her dialogue. ...of yesterday evening. Is that really necessary? I have already told Inspector Lestrade all that happened. Yes, madam, it is. I will tell you then. Sir Eustace retired about half past ten. I sat in this room until after eleven, absorbed in a book. Before I went upstairs, I entered the dining room to fetch a candle and... Oh, God. Please, go on. As I approached the French window, I found myself face to face with an elderly, broad-shouldered man who had just stepped into the room. Close behind the first man, I saw two others. One of them struck me a savage blow with his fist and felled me unconscious to the ground. Hmm. When I came to myself, I found that they had secured me tightly to a dining room chair. It was at that instant my unfortunate husband entered the room. He fought with the intruders? Yes, I think he had heard them, for he was holding his stick. But they were three, and he eventually succumbed. One of them, the elder one, struck him a terrible blow with the poker. I fainted once more. When I opened my eyes, they had withdrawn. Then my brave Teresa came to my assistance. Did these three villains steal anything? Yes, I found that they had taken the silver from the sideboard. But you can see for yourself in the dining room. All right, and this is our first opportunity for a character portrait. And there's only three in this particular case. So this is uh, the first of three, and I'll show you what we've got to do. All right, so obviously the first one's right there. That's the bruise on her eye there. Okay, and then as we move our way down or across, sorry, we've got something there pale cheeks and now we'll move down and there'll be a brooch here on a, or a necklace or something Australian again oh this game's got a few little Australian things and then just her, her top or her dress here okay and we'll go down and we've got a bruise on her hand and the wedding ring as well and that's it character portrait complete now we're going to talk to her again, but we need to be ready for a QTE, so get ready with that X button. You mentioned that your marriage was not a happy one. Was there anything specific that was troubling you? He was not a nice man when he was drunk, and he suffered from dark moods, but nothing else. And there we go. Push X, and then our, well, it's pretty obvious, obviously it's old bruises, so click that one. The bruises on your hands are at least one week old. Your husband caused those bruises? Oh, do you? Yes, he did. He was very angry at the time. Out of control. Again. Sir Eustace was a drunkard. To be tied to such a man for life is worse than death. Your ladyship? 
All right, so that's it for Lady Brackenstall for now, and we're going to talk to her maid or whatever you'd call it, um, and we're going to get our second character portrait as well. So two out of three already. I would like to hear your testimony. Certainly, sir. And we'll get through her dialogue first. As I sat by my bedroom window, I saw three men in the moonlight down by the lodge gate. Another what terrible Australian accent. If I'd known. And then? I went to bed, and it was more than an hour after that I heard my mistress scream. And down I ran, to find her tied to the chair and him on the floor with his head smashed. That's all I know. It's probably the worst bit of voice acting in the game so far. Not not just because of the accent, but it doesn't don't feel like it matches. It sounds like a, a much older lady, and she's a, a fairly young. I would have thought. All right, now it's time for the character portrait. So X to go into that. Uh, first one is the wrinkles and things around her eyes here. Uh, and then we go all the way down with the RB, the hands. Oh, I thought I clicked that. Hang on. It's not working for me. What's that done? All right, let's try it there. So we've got the hanky. Now the hands. And then the coffee stain on the apron. And that's it. Easy as that. And we don't need to talk to her any further. And we can go to the table just here and pick up a newspaper. Pick that up and have a look. All right, have a read of that. It's uh, a few pages, so I'll just pause briefly on each page. But if you need to, pause the uh, video to have a read. Okay. The Randall gang provided by Lady Brackenstall is identical to the one in the Times article. Okay, so that, that article basically was an article about the Randall gang committing a, sing, a similar crime. And the uh, description in the article is the same as what uh, the um, widow just explained to us. And we've also, uh, you may have seen it pop up on the screen, we've got our first deduction. So push Y. And we'll link the two clues here, which will be that the Randalls are well known. And we're going to link that to the criminals being identified. If we're keeping an open mind about this case, we would have to at least accept that for now. Doesn't matter which one you choose here. Uh, because as I have with the previous cases, we're going to go through all the possible endings at the end of this case. Okay, so that's it for the, that for now. Now you just need to turn to your left and head over here and you can push our uh, detective vision and have a look at this picture on the wall and then examine the scratches. Mm. These scratches are most definitely made by the picture frame. And then move the picture and examine the safe. Is Sir Eustace's safe. There may be something important inside. I must ask Lady Brackenstall to open it. And now we're just going to have a look on this table first. Grab the photo. Examine the photo. Photograph of Lady Brackett. On the front here. Made Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Now we can rotate the photo around to the back and click on each of these fasteners so that we can open the back of the photo. Then remove that and grab the or examine this so writing lady and her maid came from australia a year and a half ago on this ship okay and now we want to go and talk to lady brackenstall about the safe lady brackenstall could you open this wall safe no, it is my husband's safe. I do not know the combination. We have to open it. Your ladyship. 
All right, so she was no help to us. Let's see if we can have a crack at it ourselves. So head over to the safe. To open this safe. This safe can be cracked. And this is... Have to pay attention. One second. The dial will vibrate when it is set to the correct number. How rude of Sherlock. I'm trying to do a walkthrough and he keeps talking over me. Um, yeah, so what we can do, um, this is one of those little mini games. If you're having trouble with it, you can skip it. It'll uh, come up with that option shortly. You may or may not have to have a try. But uh, left trigger or right trigger to rotate the dials around. And as you would, uh, as luck would have it, I actually know the combination. So let's um, start with rotating it this way and all the way to 15. And you can see there that that first dial is uh, vibrating or wobbling there. So that means we've got it there. So press A to confirm that one. And it moves into place. And now we just go back the other way. And what we want to get to is five. There we go. A again. And then back the other way. And this time getting to 17. And that should be the combination. And there we go. See it wobbling again. That's it. Examine the safe again. Okay, we've got a medical report, so take that. Have a read of that. Again, I'll just uh, pause briefly here, but if you need to read it, pause the video. And there we go. Basically says that our uh, victim was very, very sick anyway. And now we need to just examine the money practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind a painting it should not really pose a challenge for a criminal the money yeah and also the coins coins possibly of value but they're scattered without care all right and now we actually want to go and talk to Teresa again so quickly just go and talk to her Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. One her with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was specially hard for her. All right, now if I um, I can't really say too much because I've obviously played ahead and um, already played through this, so I know what happens. But I do remember at this time I was starting to have my suspicions, if you know what I mean. Now exit that room, and we're going to go talk to the inspector again. So have a chat to him. What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Poor oh, crikey. threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm, the alcohol seemed to madden him. <laughs> to the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. They don't seem anywhere near alarmed enough for someone pouring fuel on a dog and setting it on fire. And uh, actually, now we can do two more deductions. So let's uh, quickly do those. So we're going to link something about Lady Lestra, uh whatever the name is, Brackenstall. Uh, we're going to link from Australia to, where is it? No personal life. They're the only two clues that really link her specifically so link those we'll open up that choice just to clear it off whether or not she knew a sailor we don't know that yet 
and I've explained what we're going to do with those and now RB again to link two more clues this time we're going to link the inspector's tail uh, with violent behavior again that's fairly obvious and here we go not even an option there we, we know that that's all true okay Okay, we're going to have to call it a video there. Join us next time for more of Case 4. But until then, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you've enjoyed it, please remember to hit that thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It would really help out a lot. And I will catch you all next time.